Butterflies from caterpillars and um, you know attracting them into your garden can be uh, a very rewarding thing. And here at the garden center, we have quite a few of the uh, host plants and nectar plants that help to attract butterflies into your garden. And um, I wanted to show a few of these, and I think um, a lot of people may not know that citrus, which is grown widely here in this area, all forms of citrus, lemon trees. Um, grapefruit, uh, lime trees, they attract the butterfly that's called the giant swallowtail. And it's a very beautiful butterfly. It's almost as big as a bird. And um, a lot of times you don't notice the, uh, the caterpillars on the tree because they actually look like bird poop. So they camouflage themselves quite well. Um, and uh, we, you know, we don't, that's, a, that's one of the reasons we don't recommend treating your citrus trees um, with insecticides and such because uh, then you'll end up, you know, killing the, the caterpillars um, that are hosting on those plants. And um, I have various forms of citrus uh, right here. And then another one that's very common in our area, a lot of people would like to grow this, is passion vine. And it makes the passion flower and the passion fruit. And um, this caterpillar is called a gulf fertility. And I think most people are very familiar with this. We, it's very prevalent throughout the green belt. Um, you'll see passion vine growing wild throughout the green belt. And um, we've actually had a lot fewer butterflies this year. I'm not sure you know, why that is. But um, another thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is there are, very two, there are two specific types of plants. The host plant is the plant that the caterpillar actually um, feeds on, and um, after it's finished eating the host plant, then it goes into chrysalis. And the, uh, the mother butterfly, they will only lay their eggs on very specific plants. So if you find a caterpillar, say on a passion vine or on a citrus tree, um, you'll know exactly what uh, type of butterfly caterpillar that you found. Um, and um, most of the time, you know, people worry about their plants being eaten, you know, by the caterpillars. The, they eat very little. Um, sometimes it seems like a lot, and there are some exceptions. But um, on the whole, you know, they don't damage your plants, and um, it's very re rewarding if you're actually raising them to see them um, to see them emerge out of your chrysalis. Um, another really common. Um, caterpillar that we find is called the eastern black swallowtail and we have a, a, a very wide um, selection of herbs here at the garden center and uh, a lot of people don't realize that there are quite a few herbs that um, are host plants for caterpillars as well and this is parsley and there are a couple different you know types of parsley Italian and curly um, and uh, the Easter black swallowtail actually lays its eggs on the parsley. And it also lays eggs on dill. So um, I would recommend if you're growing these for eating, maybe grow a batch you know, for yourself um, and then grow a batch for the caterpillars. Because almost always this time of year, you're gonna find um, you know, eggs on parsley and dill. Um, there's another plant called rue that is not quite as common. Um, and um, it's actually a host plant for the eastern black swallowtail and the giant swallowtail. And the giant swallowtail is the one that um, hosts on the citrus as well. So, you know, it's possible if you grow rue to, um, to host two different types of caterpillars. Um, and then probably the most common that... Um, that we, most people 
will recognize this as milkweed. And there are many, many different types of milkweed. Uh, but this is the most common type that you'll find in nurseries. And the milkweed is the host plant for the monarch butterfly. And um, the monarch, most children actually, you know, will do a unit of study on monarch butterflies. But we probably see more monarch butterflies in this area um, than any other, you know, recently. <clears throat> and um, they're pretty voracious eaters. So if you're raising butterflies um, or caterpillars, you'll want to have several plants um, because in their in their uh, caterpillar, you know, cycle, they'll eat quite a bit. Um, and the eggs, I couldn't find any eggs this morning because it was raining, but the, the eggs, you know, they look like eggs, but they're, they're very small and uh, they are egg shaped. Now on some of the other butterflies, they're round, um, but, um, and they're especially easy. They have less predators. Sometimes when you're raising caterpillars, you'll find that, you know, you, you've been raising one, it's gotten good and fat, and then all of a sudden it disappears. Well. There's a lot of predators, um, lizards and frogs and even dragonflies um, will eat butterfly eggs and caterpillars. But monarchs um, have a uh, undesirable taste, and so uh, usually they're left alone. So you know, if you're if you're raising caterpillars with children, um, you know, monarchs are, are a good way to go. The black swallowtails also, because if you you know, they're very easy. Uh, and they do eat several different foods. A, a lot of caterpillars, you know, they have one very specific food. But the black swallowtails are easy because they, um, they'll they eat rue, fennel, parsley, um, and um, and also dill. So, you know, they're, they're very easy to raise. Um, I do, I do have some caterpillars. And um, when they're young, when they're young, they don't eat a whole lot. And if you want to, you know, raise them with children, you can, you know, take containers or what I actually do at home. And these are monarchs. And what I actually do at home is I use a plastic shoe box that has a plastic top on it. And um, I just cut a hole in the top and put some tool. And then you can feed them in the box. And you can also, um, they'll go into chrysalis in the box. And then they have enough room to emerge because you have to make sure if you, you can't really, um, you know, raise them the entire time in a small container like this because once they get big, um, they need a little more space. Also, uh, when they're in chrysalis, they need space to emerge because their wings are very wet, so um, so they need some space to hang and dry. Um, but those are monarchs, and they're kind of they're about midway through you know their their life cycle. And then this one, I don't know if you can see him. He's um, oops, he's almost ready. He's about to go into his chrysalis, and so, oops, miss him. And we actually, here at the nursery, um, we do raise butterflies, and so we usually will have a chrysalis or two that um, you know, is about to emerge, and we do keep the keep some of the caterpillars, you know, and, and feed them. So, um, and you know, we'll, we're happy to uh, you know share information with you and get you started. Um, another really important thing: some people actually want to you know um, to grow the the caterpillars at home and go through the whole process, but other people just would like to enjoy having you know butterflies in their garden. And so there's a lot of flowers that attract butterflies. And um, there are some, you know, most, most butterflies like most flowers. However, there are some flowers that they prefer over others. Um, milkweed is one of the plants that's actually, it's a host plant and a nectar plant. So, um, 
So butterflies really enjoy, you know, drinking nectar from milkweed. And so you want to make sure that if you're raising butterflies that right away you have a nectar source for them. And also you want to make sure that there's some kind of water source because they do need water. Sometimes they actually will drink from puddles of mud. Um, but um, this is Gomprina. And uh, uh, this is... Uh, very appealing to, to butterflies, and um, so this is a good good flower to include in your garden. One of their favorites, though, is um, are pentas, and pentas actually, uh, they're very, very tough, and they do very well uh, in our hot, hot summers. They also do well under drought conditions. So, um, but this is, you know, this is a butterfly favorite, and they come in a lot of different colors, and there's a new variety that's a short penta called Griffey, and then there's the taller old-fashioned pentas, so um, they're definitely a favorite. Um, and then they also really like Rubina, and, um, and then coneflower. Coneflower is a big favorite, actually, among butterflies and birds. Um, there's a lot of different types of coneflower. Most people are familiar with the purple, purple coneflower. There's a white, but there's so many different types now. And this is a very pretty one. I, it's called Cheyenne Spirit. And then another one of their favorites is Lantana. And we try to have all of these plants available at the nursery. Um, and the benefits of these, these plants is that they're actually very tough. So these are some of the toughest plants, you know, in our hot summer here. And uh, Lantana does extremely well. And then another one of their favorites, if you're, you know, if you want to plant something a little larger, this is butterfly bush. And this is a, you know, a small, small specimen, but um, butterfly bushes, there's a newer variety called Lo and Behold, and it, you know, it gets about two to three feet, but there are some butterfly bushes that get about six to eight feet. So uh, they're very tough. Um, they're very heavy bloomers. They bloom during the hottest part of summer. Um, and so that's a very, you know, very good uh, plant to um to include in your garden to attract butterflies, but um, you know, if you if you have flowers and if you have a water source, um, you know, butterflies are sure to follow. And there are some plants that also attract hummingbirds and butterflies at the same time. Uh, they like pentas. Hummingbirds uh, also like pentas. Verbena is another good one. Um, so it's very easy. You know, if you want to uh, raise the butterflies yourself, um, but if you're just trying to attract the adult butterflies, um, you know, we can, we can help you out with that, and we almost always carry all of these plants.